Here's five things holding back your wildlife photography images. Number one, if you're still shooting on a more budget-friendly lens, try stopping up one or two stops for a cleaner shot. Most lenses are built pushing the boundaries of their limitations in optic quality when you open them all the way up to their widest aperture. If you change the lowest f-stop number from let's say 6.3 to something like 7.1, you'll often notice a good step up in sharpness from what was there before. Number two, don't be afraid to learn new editing techniques. One of the things I most often do the most work on with my students that I mentor is in their editing. They're often afraid to try new tools or features or simply just haven't put in the time to learn and understand them. While these tools can be intimidating, they can often dramatically affect and change the way that your images come out and are crucial to making the most of your raw image capabilities that your camera has. Number three, give yourself a goal. When you're out doing wildlife photography, if you don't have a certain goal in mind or you haven't quite visualized an image that you want to capture, you often won't be challenged as much as a photographer in improving your skills. Desiring a certain type of creative image forces you to learn how you can achieve it and therefore grows your knowledge as a wildlife photographer. For example, to get a shot like this that I had earlier this year, I had to plan out the location in which I could get eye level with these crows on the tops of these trees that they roosted on every night. I had to plan out the right time to get a full moon placed behind them, and I had to figure out techniques for how I could edit it to bring out all the drama in the scene. All these things help me grow in my arsenal of what I'm capable of doing in my wildlife photography, rather than just taking whatever came my way. Number four, be open to feedback. This is a hard one, but have a few selected trusted others that you can ask how you can improve in your wildlife photography. Having people who are honest with you in a caring and concerning way can help you see things in your wildlife photography that you may not have recognized before, or can simply just help keep you accountable in growing in the areas that you already know that you need improvement in. When you go to a doctor, do you get offended when they tell you what you need to heal or what you need to work on to become healthier? Of course not. In the same way as a wildlife photographer, you should be open to learning and what we can honestly grow in. Number five, learn how to manual focus. Especially for those of you who aren't on cameras that are the latest and greatest flagships, it's crucial to learn how to manual focus so that when your camera can't focus properly on the subject, you can be prepared to compensate for it. It's usually not a question of if, but rather when. To learn techniques on how to manual focus, I'd highly recommend going to check out the video on my main channel that I linked in the description below and in the end screen of this video in a bit, showing how I practice and use the techniques that I've learned. I can't stress enough how much learning this valuable skill will save you in tough situations. If you want to learn more about wildlife photography or take a mentorship with me, subscribe and check out my mentorships in the description below. I love getting to work with my students on their work and watch them improve in their wildlife photography. See you guys next time.